I think that they do need to at least revisit the rules of engagement for our troops, uh, for the troops that we have there. I think that we need American forward air controllers and spotters for the aircraft attacks. I think we need uh, more flexibility for the use of special forces. And I think we need to have embedded tra American trainers with the Iraqi security forces, the Anbar tribes, and with the uh, Kurds uh, down to at least the battalion level so that we can, uh, can help them be more successful. Former Defense Secretary Robert Gates on CNN calling for our nation to play a greater role in the ground fight against ISIS, even as coalition airstrikes are renewed near Ramadi. The fall of that city, a serious loss, marking a major setback for the Iraqi military and for the coalition fighting ISIS. But the fall of Ramadi has a much bigger meaning for the families of those who were killed defending the city nearly nine years ago. Joining us now via Skype, the founder of America's Mighty Warriors, Debbie Lee. She is also the mother of Mark Lee, the first Navy SEAL killed in the Iraq War. Debbie, when you got the news that Ramadi had indeed fallen, what was your first reaction? Uh, I felt like it was betrayal. I felt like I had been sucker punched and the sacrifices that our men and women have made through the years in Ramadi, fighting for it, defending it, that it was just a travesty. And I just don't understand, JD, how we are at a place where the there are no strategies in place to be able to successfully do what our troops do. They are the best trained military in the world. They could go in there, they could take care of this, we could put some special forces guys in there, do what they do under the cover of darkness, and we could make a huge difference over there and take that area back. But for some reason, they don't want to do that. They don't want to have those strategies. It feels like they don't want to be successful over there. And I, I, it's unconscionable. I, I just don't, don't understand. So much has been sacrificed there. Not just Mark's life and his blood that's on that soil. So many others who gave everything. So many who left pieces of themselves on that battlefield. So many who are still struggling with PTSD and TBI from what they've seen over there. And how can we walk away from this? And it's not just what happened back in 2006 and seven when we saw the Anbar awakening over there. This is huge strategy for the Middle East. If they continue to make their push, ISIS wants to go in and take Baghdad. They've taken numerous cities over there in Iraq. They're, they have the momentum right now to go in there and do that. What happens when we lose Iraq? What happens then to that whole Middle Eastern area when it's con when Iraq's controlled by ISIS? And, and that affects our national security here. And Debbie, about the only coordination seems to be administration officials downplaying the nature of this loss. We recall just a few weeks ago, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, you asked for an apology for him because he was seemed to be soft peddling the notion that it would be a problem if something help, happened with Ramadi. Now it's happened, and uh, the White House press secretary yesterday used uh, the term success in what is going on in Iraq. Debbie, in your mind, in any way, shape, fashion, or form, is what happening now in Ramadi or elsewhere in Iraq, can any of that be labeled a success? Their comments are so ridiculous and so insensitive. I don't see, I don't care how far you lower the standard for that bar or what success looks like. There is no way what is happening there talks is success. Mark wrote an amazing letter two and a half weeks before he was killed. And your listeners can go to americasmightywarriors.org and read that whole thing. He talks about, we will get Iraq to stand on, on its own feet. He said, it'll take longer than most think. I was there in 2007, went back in 2010. I saw the difference we made. I saw that success that Mark talked about in that letter. If we would have left troops there instead of yanking everybody out at the time, we wouldn't see what's happening today. We wouldn't be seeing that black ISIS flag flying over Ramadi. And it is heartbreaking to so many of the families, to so many of the troops that, that served there and sacrificed greatly to watch what's happening today and then see the flippant attitude from the administration. And it, it, 
what was the one comment? You don't need to set your hair on fire about this. What on earth was that? And then to talk about success or say, well, yeah, it looks like success to us. They better get their eyes checked. I'm curious, uh, during the conversations you had in the wake of uh, the controversy with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Martin Dempsey, he said he was going to be in touch with you. You were going to get back on the phone with him. After that point where all that became very public and you credited him in writing a letter of apology, have you heard anything from General Dempsey or Pentagon officials? I did receive that same week, I did receive a, a phone call from General Dempsey and he and I personally spoke for probably 10 to 15 minutes. And some of the things that we did talk about in that letter, he says, it's a different enemy. Uh, it's a different war over there. And I said, you know, sir, I disagree with you. I politely asked to disagree or tell you I disagree, I didn't ask. But it is the same enemy. It's been given a different name. Their tactics may be a little different, but this is that same fight. This is that same enemy. And we need to be strong as a nation. I do feel like, uh, our president has gone around apologizing over and over to dignitaries in foreign countries. And it, it feels like it's an apology tour to them. But our men and women are the ones that have fought, our men and women who sacrificed. And where's the apology to those parents? Where's those apologies to those that have served for not being strong, not being a leader, who will give, uh, implement strategies over there so that we can have success, real success, where we make a difference. I met many of those Iraqi people over there, and they were so grateful for what we've done. We've watched in Ramadi, now that ISIS has taken them over, the exit that's happened there. And we've heard about- It is just a horrible situation. Debbie, I'm so sorry to cut this short. We thank you for your time as a gold star mother for your sacrifice, and we're coming back.